Now let us turn our attention to the study of ways and means through which one may develop a pleasing personality. Let us start with the first essential, which is character, for no one may have a pleasing personality without the foundation of a sound, positive character. Through the principle of telepathy, you telegraph the nature of your character to those with whom you come in contact, which is responsible for what you have often called an intuitive feeling, that the person whom you had just met, but about whom you did not know very much, was not trustworthy. You may embellish yourself with clothes of the neatest and latest design, and conduct yourself in a most pleasing manner as far as outside appearances go. But if there is greed, envy, and hatred, and jealousy, and avarice, and selfishness in your heart, you will never attract any except those characters which harmonize with your own. Like attracts like, and you may be sure, therefore, that those who are attracted to you are those whose inward natures parallel your own. You may embellish yourself with an artificial smile that belies your feelings, and you may practice the art of handshaking so that you can imitate perfectly the handshake of the person who is an adept at this art. But if these outward manifestations of an attractive personality lack that vital factor called earnestness of purpose, they will repel instead of attract. How, then, may one build character? The first step in character building is rigid self-discipline. In both the second and eighth lessons of this course, you will find the formula through which you may shape your character after any pattern that you choose. But I repeat it here, as it is based upon a principle that will bear much repetition, as follows. First, select those whose characters were made up of the qualities which you wish to build into your own character, and then proceed in the manner described in Lesson 2 to appropriate these qualities through the aid of auto-suggestion. Create, in your imagination, a council table and gather your characters around it each night, first having written out a clear, concise statement of the particular qualities that you wish to appropriate from each. Then proceed to affirm or suggest to yourself, in outspoken audible words, that you are developing the desired qualities in yourself. As you do this, close your eyes and see, in your imagination, the figures seated around your imaginary table in the manner described in Lesson 2. Second, through the principles described in Lesson 8 on self-control, control your thoughts and keep your mind vitalized with thoughts of a positive nature. Let the dominating thought of your mind be a picture of the person that you intend to be, the person that you are deliberately building through this procedure. At least a dozen times a day when you have a few minutes to yourself, shut your eyes and direct your thoughts to the figures which you have selected to sit at your imaginary council table, and feel, with a faith that knows no limitation, that you are actually growing to resemble in character those figures of your choice. Third, find at least one person each day, and more if possible, in whom you see some good quality that is worthy of praise, and praise it. Remember, however, that this praise must not be in the nature of cheap, insincere flattery. It must be genuine. Speak your words of praise with such earnestness that they will impress those to whom you speak. Then watch what happens. You will have rendered those whom you praise a decided benefit of great value to them, and you will have gone just one more step in the direction of developing the habit of looking for and finding the good qualities in others. I cannot overemphasize the far-reaching effects of this habit of praising, openly and enthusiastically, the good qualities in others for this habit will soon reward you with a feeling of self-respect and manifestation of gratitude from others that will modify your entire personality. Here again, the law of attraction enters, and those whom you praise will see in you the qualities that you see in them. Your success in the application of this formula will be in exact proportion to your faith in its soundness. I do not merely believe that it is sound. I know that it is and the reason I know is that I have used it successfully, and I have also taught others how to use it successfully. Therefore, I have a right to promise you that you can use it with equal success. Furthermore, you can, with the aid of this formula, develop an attractive personality so speedily that you will surprise all who know you. The development of such a personality is entirely within your own control, a fact which gives you a tremendous advantage and at the same time places upon you the responsibility if you fail or neglect to exercise your privilege. 
I now wish to direct your attention to the reason for speaking aloud the affirmation that you are developing the desired qualities which you have selected as the materials out of which to develop an attractive personality. This procedure has two desirable effects, namely, first, it sets into motion the vibration through which the thought back of your words reaches and embeds itself in your subconscious mind, where it takes root and grows until it becomes a great moving force in your outward physical activities, leading in the direction of transformation of the thought into reality. Second, it develops in you the ability to speak with force and conviction, which will lead finally to great ability as a public speaker. No matter what your calling in life may be, you should be able to stand upon your feet and speak convincingly, as this is one of the most effective ways of developing an attractive personality. Put feeling and emotion into your words as you speak, and develop a deep, rich tone of voice. If your voice is inclined to be high-pitched, tone it down until it is soft and pleasing. You can never express an attractive personality to best advantage through a harsh or shrill voice. You must cultivate your voice until it becomes rhythmical and pleasing to the ear. Remember that speech is the chief method of expressing your personality, and for this reason it is to your advantage to cultivate a style that is both forceful and pleasing. I do not recall a single outstanding attractive personality that was not made up in part of ability to speak with force and conviction. Study the prominent men and women of today, wherever you find them, and observe the significant fact that the more prominent they are, the more efficient they are in speaking forcefully. Study the outstanding figures of the past in politics and statesmanship, and observe that the most successful ones were those who were noted for their ability to speak with force and conviction. In the field of business, industry, and finance, it seems significant also that the most prominent leaders are men and women who are able public speakers. In fact, no one may hope to become a prominent leader in any noteworthy undertaking without developing the ability to speak with forcefulness that carries conviction. While the salesman may never deliver a public address, he will profit nevertheless if he develops the ability to do so, because this ability increases his power to talk convincingly in ordinary conversation.